Welcome to Truth Seekers, a podcast that challenges the false corporate narrative underlying social injustice and the erosion of democracy. Today we are joined by Robert Messman, Healthcare for All Colorado Foundation board member and Medicare recipient. Robert has spent a lot of time studying the government CMS website, that's Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. We examine how Washington serves the corporate bottom line, making Medicare Advantage plans a Trojan horse for the privatization of traditional Medicare. Many of us don't know the difference between traditional Medicare and Medicare Advantage plans. The simple fact is that the only medical insurance organization in the country that negotiates rates that bring down the gouging prices of many hospitals and providers is Medicare. Private insurers all pay two to three times for services what Medicare pays. And Medicare's overhead is a tiny fraction of that of private insurers who spend big on advertising, lobbying, executive salaries, and shareholder profits. The 2003 Medicare Modernization Act was written with the purpose of providing large profits to Big Pharma and the private insurance industry. Since 2003, increasingly large subsidies have been granted to Medicare Advantage plans so that by 2009, U.S. taxpayers paid 14% higher costs to subsidize Medicare Advantage plans than to fund traditional Medicare. But when the Bush administration and Congress reconstituted Medicare Advantage plans around 2003, guided by the insurance lobby, they not only allowed these misnamed Advantage plans to freeload off the low rates that Medicare negotiated, But they started giving Medicare Advantage plans, which were supposed to show that private insurers could do things more efficiently than Medicare, more money per patient than Medicare gets, and turned a blind eye to their schemes that overbill around $10 billion a year and often upcode minor illnesses to get extra sickness funds. Traditional Medicare covers a majority of health care costs, Many people purchase Medigap plans as supplemental insurance to traditional Medicare. Now, with Advantage insurers lobbying and funding our Washington politicians ever more, the Trump-controlled administration of Medicare has begun distorting the cost evaluations its website publishes comparing traditional Medicare and Medigap policies to Medicare Advantage plans. If you follow the Medicare site's links to finding a supplement or Medigap plan, the current table showing the 11 Medigap plans grossly distorts the cost of Medigap plans with a new column entitled Estimated Annual Costs, or EAC. That column scares people away from Medigap plans by displaying EACs that are two to four times higher than the plans actually cost. This is simply fraudulent. Medicare with Medigap plan insurance distinguishes itself from Advantage plans by having none of the surprise fine print that Advantage plans have. Medicare Advantage plans can shrink their provider networks at any time and they can drop plans as they desire. While Medicare Advantage plans are required to cover everything that Medicare covers, they don't have to cover every benefit in the same way. Even though Medicare Advantage may offer coverage of relatively inexpensive services, such as dental or vision care, private Medicare Advantage plans often impose higher out-of-pocket cost sharing for services required by the sickest, including hospitalization or home health benefits. The chronically ill often find that Medicare Advantage plans will not cover needed health care, often forcing them to return to traditional Medicare. This leaves the highest cost, sickest patients to be covered by traditional Medicare, while Medicare Advantage insurers cherry-pick the healthiest, most profitable patients. 
Medicare Advantage insurers further protect their windfall gains by transferring risk and cost in the form of higher deductibles and co-pays to the insured, reducing benefits and also shrinking provider networks, thereby reducing choice of doctors and hospitals. Surprisingly, there are no commonly used criteria for what constitutes medical necessity so that private insurers exercise wide discretion to determine what they will pay for. They may decide to stop paying for medically necessary care, like skilled nursing care, by declaring it custodial. Doctors often don't decide. Instead, utilization review persons employed by Medicare Advantage decide whether any prescribed treatment will be allowed. bottom line is that by using Advantage plans to theoretically save money, you will generally pay more if you have a serious illness because of the blizzard of co-pays you are likely to encounter. As people flock to these heavily advertised plans that often dump the sickest into traditional Medicare, Medicare's risk pool economics shrink. If, as private insurers are scheming, Advantage plans take over, we will lose the one barrier we currently have against the outrageous cost of the healthcare industry. So think twice about choosing a Medicare plan and beware of what should be called the Medicare disadvantage plans. Besides creating windfall gains for the insurance industry, Medicare Advantage plans ultimately serve as a vehicle for the privatization of Medicare. We the people might ask, who is Congress serving? Congress too often is serving the bottom line profits of corporations, including commercial health insurers. It is a symbiotic relationship as commercial insurers make big contributions to our Congress members. The cozy relationship between Congress and the health industrial complex has created a congressional revolving door through which former Congress members move into jobs as high-paid industry lobbyists. Thus did Representative Billy Towson leverage his key role in passage of the 2003 Medicare Modernization Act to become the highly paid president and CEO of the industry trade group Pharma when he left Congress. His is one story of the many who reap large financial gains by moving from Congress to positions as highly paid industry lobbyists. At the very moment that many advocate moving to a Medicare for All health care model, Washington continues to promote the privatization of Medicare with intense efforts to move seniors into Medicare Advantage plans. America's Health Insurance Plans, AHIP, the lobbyist for private health insurance companies, opposes Medicare for All and promotes Medicare Advantage plans that increase federal subsidies to private insurers, even as traditional Medicare funding is being cut by Washington. Encouraged by AHIP in 2019, 368 Congress members signed a letter expressing strong support for Medicare Advantage plans. Even some Congress members who say they support Medicare for All have signed the letter promoting AHIP's agenda of privatization of Medicare, advocating transferring large numbers of seniors to Medicare Advantage plans. A search of opensecrets.org reveals what many Congress members don't want you to know the large contributions they receive from the insurance, drug, hospital, and other interest groups that benefit hugely from privatized health insurance. This has been Truth Seekers Health Justice. Produced at Denver Open Media. Music by Tim Johnson. Underwriting by Healthcare for All Colorado Foundation. This is Michelle Swenson.